Hello everyone, Jamie Starr with the New World News Network. This is basically going to be a part two of the Alex Jones confrontation with the Young Turks. One point, someone commented this on the video, and I literally, upon uploading it, I was walking down to the kitchen about to make a grilled cheese and bacon, and it hit me where I was like, wow, Cenk didn't get explosive until Anna started going off. Like, I think there was some sort of like innate manly instinct where that little cuck decided he oh he can't have this woman lashing out and seeming tougher than the rest of all the cucks on the young turks so kudos to uh whoever commented bringing that up definitely crossed my mind as soon as i finished the video but i really did that one on the fly so uh i wasn't able to add that point but here's something um, they did a video where they were explaining something going on about it, and I just found something, you know, a little bit of evidence to prove that they are as full of shit as everyone that they want to point the finger at, and everything they accuse everyone else of, it's, it's them, it's projection. The number one maneuver of the liberal debating tactic is projection. I'm actually, I'm going to try to, like, how uh, Ben Shapiro has his list of rules for uh, debating liberals and whatnot. I'm going to put together a list for uh, rules for race debates. And it's not, it's not going to be as much the tactics to come back. I mean, it, we could, could just turn it into a drinking game. Um, but all the maneuvers I notice people do all the time, where it's the, well, not all, not everyone, right? Not all. Or, you know, you could say something like, you know, this happened to so-and-so yesterday. Well, 150 years ago, 150 years ago, someone with the same skin color had this happen. And? I mean, it's it really bothers me. I see all this shit on Facebook, and I just try to remind myself, this is one moron in a sea of people, and I should not believe that everyone is as dumb as these people I grew up around but Facebook oh my god what's on your mind that's a, that's a question your therapist should be asking that's not a question all your friends want to know and all it really does is just show everyone's fucking mental illness like I, I'll add this little side point and then I'll get to the video because I'm just I'm in such disbelief about this so I had this girl share this thing about you know blacks more likely being shot whatever whatever so i just said listen i'm not going to try to tell you you're wrong or anything like that there's two sides to every story again i'm very level-headed and try to be very neutral and even when i walk into these things because i know how it will go if you're not um and i said I just want to bring this up. So I, so I showed them the study where they set, the showed that a white cop will shoot a white person quicker than a black person. And their conclusion was that there's a counter bias because the white cops know that there are judicial and political and repercussions. There's more repercussions for shooting a minority than a non-minority. So, of course... Then it gets into, oh, well, you know, let's look at some modern things about blacks being targeted and this, this, and that. And then, of course, you know, they're cool with all that. And I said, okay, but then we have to look at who's committing these crimes. So I brought up the interracial rape stats where, in a nutshell, white men don't rape black women and black men happen to rape thousands of white women. And then I said, you know, and again, I'm uncomfortable even bringing these up. This is how bad it is that you can't even just bring up data and, and have it, you know, be brought up into a level-headed conversation. So then I said, all right, let's also look at New York's gun crimes things. 80% black, 20%, you know, Hispanic, very minimum on every other side, um, like 0.02% Asian. And so the woman just then goes to, oh, my God, well, you know, I can't believe I haven't been raped being around these thousands of black people. And it's like, no, you moron. Like, first off, like, no one's saying all of them are this way. We're just acknowledging that it happens. And it happens more in proportions to others. Like, 
this is why nothing will ever be accomplished because you can't have an honest conversation about this stuff without people going completely nutty and then of course you know i bring up these things and and it goes to well look at the subtext of what you're saying you're saying that they're inherently more violent no i'm not i mean you would think that way because you think everything boils down to race but i said maybe it's that they're taught that white people are their oppressors and uh they have resentment against single mothers raising them, so they happen to lash out at who they think their oppressors are, but the weaker ones, the women. No one wants to hear any of that. And then here's where here's the kicker. So I present this data, and of course then I'm told, well, this is hysteria. This is, you know, you'd fit in great with Emmett Till. I mean, again, point to an irrelevant thing in the past that has no bearing on anything that's actually being taught. Just, you know, these emotional heartstring cards that they just throw left and right. <sighs> so crazy. So fucking crazy. I, I, you want to talk about hy hysteria? The idea that cops are hunting black men is hysteria. Everything you're concerned about is hysteria. And then someone brings up actual data and that gets accused of being hysteria. The other thing I brought up is at the RNC, and I'll do a whole video on this, you had uh, red, white, and blue elevators. And of course people saw the white elevators and oh my God, we're so triggered, the color white. And there's only one context that they can have that color exist in because they're obsessed with race. And of course, when I, when I bring it up and I'm like, well, the only reason people respond this way is because they're obsessed with race. And then it's like, oh yeah, well, you know, that's, that's because of, you know, one group of people in particular. I mean, it's this whole notion that this is just, I mean, you'd act, you think there's a white supremacist on television or anywhere that you could find that's preaching about how white people are so wonderful. I mean, this, the denial of reality is, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Well, anyway. This weekend, though, I, I do have three interviews lined up with a whole bunch of different black guys. Um, two of them, I think, are against Black Lives Matter and a lot of the political stuff that, you know, identity politics brings in. One guy, I think, is for it, but I think he has, you know, more pro-family, um, pro-responsibility message. So I'm going to see if I can convert him full way into being a libertarian because I think he still falls into the collectivist mindset. So sorry about that rant. That shit just really bothered me. And um, I just had to delete those people. And I feel bad doing this. I feel like I'm making myself a safe space. But it's, it's like it's at the point where you have to at least be able to have a honest dialogue with me without throwing insults making wild accusations, pointing to irrelevant things in the past, and just having it all be this, oh, well, our emotions, you have to understand how we feel. And it's like, oh, I can understand it, but I don't care. I don't care how you feel. I mean, even the other day, I had someone posting online this nonsense about, oh, well, at first, they post the article about Gaddafi and leaked Clinton emails mentioning about how France's president, you know, was for overthrowing Gaddafi because of the gold currency. So this person goes and says, all y'all praying for, for France, but don't pray for Africa. Fuck y'all. Fuck out of here. This, this, and that. And I just said, okay, so the article shows that France's president is a scumbag. We know that. Every leader of any country is generally a scumbag. But I worry when we stop feeling compassion for the civilians because of the actions of our leader. How would you feel if people elsewhere in the world were like, fuck these American blacks because America invaded Afghanistan? Oh, well, that's how they do feel. We don't have any allies. And I said, excuse me? You got D-Ray from Black Lives Matter meeting at the White House. You have the education systems. You have the New York Times writing in defense of rioting. You have the media, the politicians, and the education systems as allies. Oh, well, they ain't nobody. 
what do you mean they ain't nobody? Well, they ain't a country like Nigeria or Ghana or Ethiopia. Nigga, what do you think Ethiopia is going to do to help your ass out? They got their own problems. You want a whole nation? You want a nation to step to the United States? And I explained, that's a suicide mission. And he agreed with me on that. So you think some nation should just hop on a suicide mission over 200 dead black guys a year at the hands of cops? Let's talk about hysteria and perspective for just a moment. You want another country to end up like Libya? You're the one saying how awful it is and everything. It makes no sense. Now, the same person also posted a thing about a quote, how come 5,000 units of our currency is only worth one of yours when we have all the gold, gold reserves? No country has a gold-backed currency. That's part of why they overthrew Gaddafi. And I explained that to him. I also explained to him, you have to understand how the value of currencies is set. This is like basically saying, well, why is two euros equal one dollar when I have a pot of gold sitting over here? The pot of gold is irrelevant. It's completely irrelevant. And this is, this is how all this stuff just gets so diluted and, and nonsensical. And people will get these warped ideas that don't make any sense. Because it's like, well, how come this is equal to this if there's this shit over the side that doesn't have any involvement in anything whatsoever? It, it mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. I just can't, I can't wrap my head around it, and I can't, I grow very intolerant of all of it. You know, I've produced a lot of rap records, and there's a very specific quote on one of those songs where a friend of mine who's a rapper, very well known, I'm going to do a video where I'm going to highlight some of the parts of my music career that I think you all would find interesting. Because I'll tell you what, I don't, I don't brag much. But you want to know the reason why Jay-Z and Kanye and Beyonce do all these surprise releases and direct to title and everything? It's because of me. It's because I was fucking the music industry hard. Me and a friend of mine. And anyway, on one of his ra records, he raps about me. He says, found out the white boy's the realest nigga here. Guess who that white boy was? Me. Realest nigga here. Because I don't have tolerance for this bullshit. I don't have patience for this bullshit. Either we can get this money, we can make a plan and make some shit happen, or shut up. Shut up and get out of my way, because I will run you over. Run you the fuck over. No time for the bullshit. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So, let's see some bullshit. Some bullshit that I have no tolerance for. Not All right, we're back on the Young Turks. Uh, obviously, a little bit of commotion here. Eh. As Alex Jones and a guy significantly worse than him uh, entered the stage here. So, let, for the for those of you who didn't see it, let me explain what happened. So, we're doing the Young Turks live at the RNC, and uh, and we were just getting through a Donald Trump Ted Cruz story when Alex Jones came on the set. In the beginning, it was actually a little bit friendly. First of all, I didn't give him permission to come on the set. Yeah, I would never walk onto anybody else's set. Imagine we walk on into the middle of a Fox News, MSNBC, CNN set, or just any person doing a radio show. That's unacceptable. I wasn't uh, asked to be on that set. But, you know, sometimes people do things tongue-in-cheek. Now, according to Alex, he was invited on the set, and I've heard you can see that in the video. I didn't pay much attention, but I heard there was a guy from the Young Turks asking him to come over. So, could be a setup. Could not, could just be someone instigating trouble, who knows, but this isn't the big glaring lie. A little bit, like, for example, I was doing an interview earlier today in Triumph, uh, the insult comic dog. Oh, no. Did I get that wrong? No, yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> I know it a thousand times, but anyway. So he came on for a little bit, and it was fun, and we played along. So Alex Jones comes here. In the beginning, I wasn't mad at all, right? Okay, he's doing his grandstanding. And he's doing it because we have a much larger audience, and that's the only way he can sneak. Now, that was the glaring lie. We have a much larger audience, and you hear Anna, absolutely. And then this guy's going to, let me, let me just show right now. As you can see, the blue, it, this is on the Google Trends charts. The blues is a search for the Young Turks. 
So you can see pretty slow rising until recently, and then it kind of bumps up. Alex Jones, the red. Bam, bam, all over the place. I mean, at some points, three, four, four times the amount. Boom, look at that. And Young Turks, way, 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 baby down there. And if you search InfoWars, Alex Jones' platform, not him himself, still leaps and bounds above the Young Turks. So they're just, I mean, I know the term fake it till you make it. Hell, I was in Atlantic Records on election night 2008 and there was some dude in there walking around in some fucking looking like uh CeeLo dressed like prince in some fucking slippers and shit and i figured oh if this guy's walking around the office wearing slippers and shit he must be important turns out he wasn't but he thought i was he thought he had seen me at award shows and stuff and oh did i see you at this award show i don't know maybe I didn't say, oh, no, I wasn't there, because you fake it till you make it. Yeah, yeah, I'm a producer. Yeah, I, I might have been there. I, I don't know. We could have met. I mean, you just, that's how you got to be. So you don't end up starstruck when you're there conducting business. So you're not there as a fan. You're there as someone there doing to do, going to do work. Um, but this is fake it till you, I mean, this is just outright lying, because you're going to see this smug motherfucker on the left. He's going to even say, because they're going to bring up Tommy Lauren, Alex Jones, and all these other people, and he's going to say, well, we have a bigger audience than all of them combined. Now, we just, uh, we can see the trends again. We can see who, who has a larger audience. Well, Alex Jones alone has a larger audience than the Young Turks. I mean, I could add, uh, how is she spell her name? Tommy, Lauren, something like that, right? No, I spelt it wrong. But I mean, she's on the blaze, so let's let's throw in the blaze and see. Oh man. And again, this is how how easy things are. You can just fact check people's nonsense real easy. Uh, come on, Google. Alright, well, let's get back to these lying fuckers and see if this... ...in and get it to a larger audience. So, if he's containing his tiny, tiny audience, well, then he has more trouble. See, he's this still just They're going on thinking that Alex Jones has a tinier audience than the Young Turks. And that's... A ridiculous fucking fucking lie we just saw the graph now it's being a dick so uh let's just go back to this oh now this is being a dick oh now my internet's being a dick fuck this is why you should probably like download the videos and then do them well anyway you guys get the point Oh, now we're connected? Alright. Let's see. Go ahead and... The Blaze Television Network. Which one is the Blaze? Green? Oh, so we see it's nothing really there. And then, bam! Right out the box! Way more than the Young Turks. So, I mean, they're just... Saying this shit. That it has no bearing on reality whatsoever and their audience probably believes this shit this is all right okay i know it a thousand times but anyway so he came on for a little bit and it was fun and we played along so Americans, the thing two things that pissed me off and why we had the mayhem in here that we did was he handed me a shirt uh, with Bill Clinton's face on it that said rape. I'm not interested in that kind of BS. It's one thing if you're doing it tongue in cheek and you're going to do it briefly. It's another thing is you come and take over somebody else's show and then you start doing sickening, grotesque propaganda. This That's because the rape scandals are the no-go. Now, if you look, thank you, followers, fans, people who just supply me with the ammo. I am, I am like the the ak or the ar-15 and you guys are my bullets just giving them to me 
They're making shirts with Trump's face on it in a democracy far, far away. I mean, they're, they're guilty of everything they accuse everyone else of tenfold. This is from the same people who are representing, our, and Roger Stone was here, biggest hatchet man for Donald Trump. In court papers, his former wife, Ivanka Trump, said he raped me. And what do they do? Because they're swift boat guys. That's exactly what they do. They take the worst things about themselves and pretend that it's their opponents that do it. So that shirt set me off. Then I didn't, hadn't even seen Roger Stone. Roger Stone, I shouldn't even be talking about him because he's such a despicable human being. Fairly he is known, <laughs> if he's known at all, he's known in American politics as the hatch. His job is to be a hatchet man. His job is to be a liar. Notice how there's no specifics. He's not like, well, Roger Stone is guilty of this. He's just calling names. He's not saying anything that I could even, I can't Google roger stone hatchet man like I, he's not referencing anything that i could even start to look into and this is what bothers me if you're going to say something at least give me a tidbit that i can look for chank at least just a little nibble of information he's a professional liar anyone that's literally his job Almost everything he's ever said has been proven to be a lie over and over again. And later, after the controversy is over, they will brag. Roger Stone will brag about, ha ha, I was lying to you. Uh, you idiot people in the press, you listen to me. No one in the media should ever take Roger Stone seriously. I'm not going to tolerate that guy on any set for any reason. Can I jump in for a second? Um, so Alex Jones is now going around telling people that he was invited on the set. That is absolutely false. He is absolutely lying. And let me tell you what's going on behind the scenes at Radio Row specifically. At Anna, the fet, the body shaming, and it, I mean, Young Turks body shaming. Fox News host shames women who aren't beach body ready. Chinese invent new iPhone body shame game. Oh, Alex, of course, put up a video of that's because probably I'm, me and other people tweeted Alex asking him how it feels to be body shamed by Anna. Fat shaming hot mom catches grief on Facebook. So, I mean, as you can see. Oh, is this? Oh, oh, look, it's already made articles. Anna Kasparian's disgraceful fat shaming hypocrisy. And that's because they get on here and they do all this stuff. I pulled articles even recently from a feminist who was talking about body shaming online and everything. And then you see her posting videos of like guys who can't dance and shaming them and everything else. And it's just basically how they pay for their sins. Like they'll they'll pick something and they'll ridicule and mock people and then in order to account for the fact that they're a shitty person they'll have this desire to advocate for another issue the rnc which i haven't talked about at all this has turned into a, a circus where members of the media do certain things to get attention to increase their viewership or their exposure they don't care how loathsome they have to be in order to get that attention alex jones is a perfect example of that and i don't i I cannot again the someone with a far bigger audience than them and they just have this ego where they're like well he's just trying to use us to increase his viewership we're the victims because we're so big and wonderful and they just want to tear us down i mean they should be thanking him realistically they should be thanking him that i mean i'm sure they're they're Twitter and their Google Analytics is going to spike up a little bit from this. It's not, they, they say any publicity is good publicity, so you should be thanking him. Handle someone exploiting our show, capitalizing on our show, just to get eyeballs on him, okay? He's a fucking crazy person. And then Alex started saying that. Is that a, oh, I don't know. Is that like mental illness shaming, retard shaming? I, I don't know. Anna's on a shaming roll. Anna, about how we support Saudis. Nobody who's ever watched this show would ever come to... 
Anything that even mean. What does that even mean? mean? Yeah. Oh, I'm a jihadi Jane. Okay. okay. Oh, they're Muslim apologists. Oh, you you could spend ten minutes on atheism is unstoppable's channel, which I recommend everyone spend more than ten minutes on that channel. Um, and you can see Muslim apologists left and right and left and right because they're it's the it's the racist liberal mentality of. Oh, they're poor, so they're little babies, and we can't, we, it's their culture, it's a little baby culture, and we can't criticize, because we're from a different culture, and we have an iPhone, and they have a, a bucket of sand, and they, they, they bow down three times a day, and kiss the ground, and do whatever they do, and oh, it's so little and cute, and I just can't, you know, it doesn't matter that they honor killings. Oh, it doesn't matter that they cut the women's divide by JJ. Oh my God, I hate these people. And so then his lackeys, these loser, idiot, idiot lackeys, yelling rape and terrorists, etc., because they can't make a rational argument. Yeah. That's what I mean. Who's yelling rape and, and terrorists and everything? What is this guy talking about? Incredibly stupid person does random insults. Oh, I'm not connected to any. Oh my god. Oh my god. Did we just get him and his idiot lackeys and, and name and this and this and and random insults? What the fuck are they they've been talking about for the past four minutes? Random insults. I mean, it's a it is. Oh my god. It goes out his mouth one second and then it's like he forgets what he's just said and then he says how awful what he just did was but he doesn't realize that he just did it oh is this is this is mind blowing mind blowing thing in reason or logic and that's who he is that's why he is such a small show that's why he's a pith small show uh 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 chank chank you might want to check your data before you, because you're up there calling everyone liars and you don't have a fucking clue about the numbers and you should you should check it out check 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 to check pathetic show that he has to come on to larger shows to get this audience larger show check check to check to check 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 it out so once he did that well okay not only were you not invited, and now, of course, since he's, again, Alex Jones, another professional liar. What, what is this whole show based on? Everything's a conspiracy. Now, think about how stupid that is. Does Yet, that if you want to say there's a conspiracy about cops hunting blacks in the streets and, and you know, body image shaming and every, I mean, these guys, they, that's, that's the whole problem. Liberals talk about the conspiracy, feminism, oh, the patriarchy, what a conspiracy theory. I mean, everything liberals talk about is conspiracy theories. I mean, there are no conspiracies in the world? No. I believe JFK was not just killed by Lee Harvey Oswald. Okay. Does that mean everything's a conspiracy? Oh, who put this paper here? It's a conspiracy by the Bilderberg and the lizard people. No, Alex Jones. Of course, he always has to, and Alex Jones doesn't even talk about lizard people, but he has to try to drag this in. You know, David Icke. David Icke was on Sky News or like Australia's News recently, and it was funny because they tried discrediting him and making him seem crazy, and he real calmly was like, well, if you go through all the ancient cultures you see this common thing it's not my theory it's just me presenting and packaging a bunch of different cultures spread from all around the world and joining all their theories together and what they thought was going on i mean even christianity the serpent you know it's it's in all of these theories it's not and as far as you know the, oh the conspiracy half the time they're government documents i mean there's very little that Alex Jones reports on where he's just like, well, I have a hunch. I mean, normally there's some sort of documentation, you know, the FEMA camps. Oh, FEMA camps are a conspiracy. Yet you can fucking Google Earth them. You can see all the dots where it's like, oh, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. Like, if he believes that is a moron, if he doesn't believe it, he's messing with you guys. It's a racket. Cenk, a lot of people at home might have heard that Alex Jones is on our set. It's a fucking false flag. Are you just going to believe everything you hear? <laughs> and so, you know what, yeah, Anna? Because, again, 
false flags don't happen. It's not like I can f just, you know, type in Operation Gladio or anything like that where it was, you know, these operations where they were like, oh, you know, we're going to pull a psych, psych op and we're going to shoot people and blame our political enemies to go after different people and start wars with people who didn't actually do something. Oh, it's not like the Gulf of Tonkin, you know, they came out and said, Viet the Vietnamese sunk a ship that never was fucking there for the sake of starting that war. Yeah, it's not like this stuff happens. It's not like it's been going on for so long that it's all fucking declassified at this rate. I mean, this, this is the level of denying reality I, I was talking about. Denial of reality in this day and age is, is so far gone so far gone i believe in the 2012 theory when they said the end of the world the it was figurative it was the end of the world as you knew it because now there are these people that are existing in a complete false reality because their brains cannot handle the truth you know there's lots of good bits in mind Kampf where hitler talked about psych warfare you know where he basically said if you tell a lie enough times and loud enough, people will believe it. The other thing, though, is to make the lie so extravagant that the normalcy bias will kick in. And they will say, they couldn't do that. They wouldn't do that. You know, it's like the idea of them faking the moon landing. NASA couldn't all be fake. You know, you couldn't have, a cons you couldn't have that many people in on it because they don't realize how compartmentalization works. You know, I've heard conspiracies about nuclear testing and people were saying that some of the videos you would see of a uh, nuke testing were just giant things of tnt going off and all they would do is they'd set up one area with a ton of tnt and have troops over there and then they'd have another area a couple miles away with other troops setting up tnt and they'd both tell the troops oh you're just setting up the dummy test site so we have something to compare it to Neither of the troops encounter each other because they're miles away, and they just fire off two piles of TNT, and one group assumes one's a nuke, the other assumes it's a test, and vice versa on both sides. It's so simple. So simple. I mean, these people, and it's again because they have such an ego that they have such a hard time believing anyone could pull one over on them. Meanwhile this whole time they keep going on telling themselves not not everyone else everyone else can find out it's a lie very easily but telling themselves that they are bigger they have the bigger platform they have more of an audience they're so big and mighty and that's why they're being attacked when it's not true whatsoever just said actually makes me more mad because yeah. i definitely 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 did not invite him on this set I haven't seen him at all. In fact, I'm not sure I've ever seen him in person. I interviewed him on current TV. Yep. He, I went on his show. I sh apparently should have never done him that favor. And so then he pops yeah. out of my set and now he's lying all, all across about it. So understand who Alex Jones is. He's apparently like his buddy, Roger Stone, a professional liar. And he's- Wanna talk about professional liars. Again, refer graphic A, even the blaze. Even the Blaze does double the amount. Young Turks doesn't even go above the Blaze until April 2016. They start to around October 2015, and we all know the Blaze is Glenn Beck, and he's just gone off the deep end. Obsessed with attention. All he's done is cause trouble at the RNC. Why? So he can get his name out there. That's all he's doing, and that's yeah. the poor head out. Jones on the show, have him on the show. Yeah. He'd have a seat. Yeah. yeah, that's how it we, works. We you ask to come on the yeah. show, and it's not like I haven't had him on the show before. Yeah. There's a way to get on the show, and but Roger Stone is another loser. He can't get on uh, yeah. most shows because people realize he's a professional liar, yeah. professional con man. And think about Donald Trump. Or maybe he's going to talk about his book, The Clinton's War on Women, and about, you know, there's actually a really good Dinesh D'Souza, Alex Jones interview from the RNC where Dinesh D'Souza gives his take on Hillary, and he says, Hillary's given this poor wife, you know, narrative, where, oh, you know, her husband's a cheater, and this, this, and that. And he throws that narrative on, the, on its head, and says, basically, Hillary is Bill's fixer. 
she knows Bill has this nymphomaniac, you know, rape compulsion. And she realizes the only way he could get along, get away with it for so long is to be at his side covering for him. And worse comes to worse, you just feel bad for her. But everyone check out that interview too. Very, very good. I have so much respect for Dinesh D'Souza. That he associates himself with a dirtbag like Roger Stone. What does that tell you Again, about? Again, just throwing these insults. It's, uh, Chank, you have no, your short term memory is so shot. The guy running for president of the United States that associates himself with a guy who is proud to be a professional liar, proud to be a hack. Guilt by association. Shit, man, and has never told the truth. So that's who Donald Trump is, that he backs people like uh, Roger Stone. Okay, and sorry for the interruption of the show. Uh, obviously, we had to explain the situation here. And finally, the larger point is the one animate, which is the best one. Oh, look, it's not just Alex Jones and Roger Stone. This whole media has gotten to a point where bad behavior is rewarded. Yeah. Yeah. You rip people's face off on Twitter, it lies, it doesn't matter. Racist, it doesn't matter. Sexist, misogynist, whatever. Who's, who, what's, which is the news network that accuses everyone of being a, a racist or a liar or a misogynist? Oh, the Young Turks, the super regressives. I mean, again, projection. And even, then you say things like, hey, what, attacking a person for being black might be racist. They're like, oh, you're attacking white people. Boo Building a straw man that doesn't exist. Woohoo! Crocodile tears, right? And what does the press do? They reward it. Oh, look at this. This guy got banned from Twitter. Let's make a big deal out of it. They reward this bad behavior. The minute that there's. I mean, he's referencing Milo, obviously. It's a Black Lives Matter protest. What happens? Tommy Lauren jumps up. Oh, look at me, daddy. Look at me, daddy. Look at me. Joke. Oh, Black Lives Matter is KKK. Yeah. And every time somebody says something atrocious, you guys reward it. Is he talking to his audience? I mean, is is this is this guy such a megalomaniac that he is like insulting his audience and telling them that they reward everyone else's bad behavior? Or is he trying to portray himself as being the exception? Because there's a candy land somewhere where Chenk exists, where he is the mightiest of news platforms, and he is the only honest journalist out there, and he doesn't have a bias or anything like that. And when people say logical, reasonable things, you're like, oh, that's boring. Logical and reasonable things, you've done nothing except call names for a whole seven minutes now. I mean, really. Really. Logical and reason. Who was the one uh, uh, screaming and raving like a lunatic in Alex Jones' face? Who's the one that went off the deep end? Him and Anna. Him and Anna were. We've all seen the footage. It's pretty self-evident. Now, whether Alex Jones was honestly invited there or not, that's whatever. But those two went off the deep end. Let's not cover smart people. Let's cover the dumbest people in America. But... You also have to acknowledge that they do all that. They, they'll say anything, do anything, and we're so much bigger than all the people that you've named combined. Uh, again, graphic A, blatant lie. And this is the problem. Uh, Sargon of Akkad did a wonderful video about the Young Turks in which he said, the problem is, is that Chank has created an echo chamber where everyone just repeats and agrees with him. And we can see this. They've all bought into this delusion that they are bigger and better than everyone else. All of them combined, no, each one of them is bigger than you, period. I mean, I, I should, I should, I don't know if I can do this at the same time. Let me see, F9, yeah, I'm going to screenshot this and I'm going to send this to them so that they know they are liars. Because they should be aware, and they should issue a, a retraction and an apology. But you know it's not going to happen. Continue. So if you so, actually cover the news, more people will actually watch it. So John Good makes behavior. a great point, and I want to thank you guys, every member out there. By the way, our show is beholden to you guys. It's not because we're special hosts. It's because you guys are awesome, and you power us. If we didn't have you, we'd have nothing at all. But... So, and, and thank you to all the members. All right, enough of this pandering. I just wanted to throw that out there. Not only are they hypocrites, they're blatant 
liars. So, enjoy everyone. Check the links below. Subscribe to my channel. Lots of good stuff coming. Thank you for watching.